Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Sunday, March 13th, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own, especially for this video. Right? Just consider this to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now you know the crazy man down the street, right? The guy who's walking around sounding like a lunatic who you think, you know, is on the verge of being penniless, right? The guy's views are so crazy. They are so out there that you have to question the guy's sanity. Well, let's pursue that line of thinking in this video. I'm not afraid to look like that guy. Just understand, the things I'm saying in this video are serious. Let me just point out, in the 1980s, I was in college. I knew a guy like this. He sounded completely out in left field. He came up to me. We were both wondering about the things we had to do to graduate. And in a scene really out of The Graduate, that movie from the late 60s, the guy said, Rich, just remember Intel. And I thought, Intel, what are you talking about? He was talking about the stock. Well, folks, Intel took off. This guy actually became one of the better investors in Silicon Valley. Right? Just understand, crazy people or people who sound crazy, you really can't tell the difference, sometimes happen to be right. So in a rare move, I'm going to talk about some private bets I've made. And then we'll dive into boxing, just so you can get an idea on how ridiculous some of my views might sound to others. Right first, in football, if you shop around, you're going to find that they're actually already offering props. American football, on which division wins the Super Bowl? In other words, I get to just pick a division, and I have every team in the division. I don't even have to be intelligent about it. I just have to know which divisions are loaded. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll make other bets, too. But I can tell you last year, I had the NFC West and did not lose any sleep thinking about the NFC Championship game, which involved the Rams and the 49ers. Well, this year... I've thrown money at the NFC West. I've thrown money at the AFC West. Russell Wilson is now in that division with Pat Mahomes, right? With Justin Herbert, with the Raiders, Derek Carr. And I've thrown money at the AFC North. Because even though they didn't make the playoffs last year, I'm always concerned about a John Harbaugh Baltimore Raven team, right? And, of course, I'm concerned about Cleveland. They have talent all over the place. Now they have Amari Cooper. And, of course, the Bengals just made the Super Bowl with Joe Burrow. In football, news broke that Tom Brady is back with Tampa. I believe he ends up with San Francisco. That's one of the reasons why I threw money today at the NFC West. Right? I think they're just dressing this up for the eventual trade. For those keeping track, Tom Brady is represented by the same agent who represents Jimmy Garoppolo. Right? Earlier tonight, I was sweating a basketball game. I had the Philadelphia 76ers, and somehow the Orlando Magic, of all teams, were hanging around. The game went to overtime. I was lucky to come away with the win there, right? On live betting, the Sixers were doing so poorly that I was able to lay a point, Sixers won by two. Nothing to brag about. In boxing, one of the biggest heavyweight fights that are going to happen this year is in such weakness protection, it's hard to find a place you can bet on it. And that's Gile Zhang, the silver medalist from the 2008 Olympics. 
and he's taking on the guy I think is going to be the eventual king of the heavyweight division. Ergovic. Right? I believe Ergovic won a bronze the year he went to the Olympics. I believe few people can even compete against Ergovic. I know people are saying, who's, who's he? Right? I believe few people can compete against Ergovic. Southpaw, Zhang, is one of them. But Zhang has a stamina problem. I believe this fight is going to determine a lot of the future of the heavyweight division. Now let's dive into the heavyweights that are on the main stage right now. We're just laying out the cards, folks. Uh, again, one man's opinion. I'm just telling you what I think's going on. Understand, too, what I think is going on evolves from day to day. I believe that Tyson Fury beats Dylan White. I don't believe White will be able to handle Tyson Fury's movement. I'm assuming that the fury of the first Wilder fight makes an appearance. Right? Dylan White's so emotional about this fight, he's not even helping promote it. These two guys have a lot of history together, but sparring is different than real fighting. Right? In sparring, a fighter says, hey, let me... Let me fool around here and try to not throw my right hand up top. Let me develop other parts of my skills. So it might look, it might look like the opponent's actually having his way in the ring. But come the day of the fight, you can imagine, the plan A of the main fighter is going to be different. I'm expecting Tyson Fury to outbox Dylan White. I think Dylan White has let's say, average stamina at best, I think he's going to fall apart in the second half of the fight. If he tries to be hyper-aggressive on Tyson Fury, who I feel is a historical heavyweight, Fury's going to have him walking into shots. I'm expecting Fury to win that fight. By the way, the fight's much bigger than any of us imagined. They put the tickets up for sale. You know, Fury has had a very odd relationship with the British Boxing Board, right? They haven't exactly been warm and cuddly with him, right? Even though he's the best fighter that the UK has had in the heavyweight division, perhaps ever, right? So let me just say this. They put the tickets up. It was a sellout, and I mean a fast sellout, right? The fans are hungry because now the British have finally figured out that the fighter they thought they had in Anthony Joshua, they actually do have in Tyson Fury. Now, Joshua has lived a life that's made for corporate sponsors, right? He's so corporate sponsored up, you'll notice he has the headphones in at certain events. No doubt getting money from the headphone company, right? He's lived a spotless life as a professional, right? We're not going to talk about the problems he had before he became a professional fighter living that spotless life. We'll give everyone a one-off <laughs> for when they were young and careless, right? But understand, Joshua isn't close to the fighter that Tyson Fury is. He's a better puncher than Tyson Fury. But in terms of setting up the punch, Joshua's just not all there. Right? Compared to Fury, Joshua's mechanical. Understand, Fury can do things Joshua just can't do. Right? Fury is a guy who can handle space. Fury's better on the inside than Joshua. You understand that if Joshua got dropped like Fury got dropped twice by Deontay Wilder, the way Fury got dropped in his last fight, you know in your heart Joshua wouldn't have survived. You know in your heart when Joshua got off the canvas he wouldn't be able to hang out smother Wilder's 
left shoulder, stay there, and be able to eventually win the fight. So the British people have their eyes open. Almost by accident, they've noticed the Lamborghini in the room. Right? This Fury White fight is huge. Dylan White has won the lottery. As the opponent, he's going to make a lot of money. Right? The bid for the fight was huge. This is an event. Now, across the street, there are problems. The one fighter in the heavyweight division who would give Tyson Fury the most trouble is Alexander Usyk. Understand the image is blown if Usyk blows through the heavyweight division. If he does so by beating Joshua, who people thought was Tyson Fury, then beats Tyson Fury after demolishing Joshua a second time. Right? Fury has a documented history of losing to athletic, smaller fighters. The Steve Cunningham fight, for example. Right? The problem he had with Otto Wallen is that Wallen was a better athlete than Tyson Fury. I'm not saying Valen had better skills. What I am saying is Fury did not have the option of staying outside against Otto Valen, like he's going to be able to stay outside against Dylan White. Right? So it's so bad, folks that a former cruiserweight champion, Evander Holyfield, has gone on record as saying that he feels that Fury is going to have a hard time with Usyk. Right? Usyk's a southpaw. Usyk's mobile. Fury's going to have to fight him. Usyk's two-handed. This is not the Deontay Wilder fight. Do you think for a second that you'd be able to park yourself on Usyk's left shoulder? Folks, that's his dominant hand. By the way, that's another theme of the heavyweight division. The emergence of lefties with power. You heard me mention Jang earlier, the guy who's going to fight Ergovic, right? He's one of the few guys who has a shot on Ergovic, and that fight's happening. By the way, Several guys passed on the fight, including Joseph Parker. Right? They didn't want to deal with Ergovic. I believe the only guy who was willing to step in the ring with Ergovic. And keep in mind, the winner of this fight becomes a mandatory contender was Tony Yoka. Right now, let's call it as it is. I don't believe Yoka beat Ergovic in the Olympics. I don't believe Yoka beat Joe Joyce in the Olympics. I'm concerned about the drug tests that Tony Yoka missed. Right there, to me, is too much image making around Tony Yoka. In any event, Yoka wanted the fight, couldn't for contractual reasons. He had another fight scheduled. So in comes Zhang. Well, just understand that Tyson Fury knows his limitations. It's not big, clunky guys. It's not guys with great right hands who don't have great boxing skills and who don't have left hands. Sorry, Bomb Squad, that's your fighter, Deontay Wilder. It's not big, clunky guys who are cautious who are looking at their corner, trying to figure stuff out, right? who start fights slow because they're worried about their own stamina. They remember where they were in the middle rounds against Vladimir Klitschko, who himself had been out of the ring for more than a year. 
right? Understand, Anthony Joshua is a sunny day fighter. The sun has to be out. The guy he's fighting has to be in pain, looking out of it. Kubrat Pulev. And even then, Anthony Joshua is cautious, isn't he? Now, that's not how the market sees him. One of the lowest over-unders I've seen in my life was his fight against Dominic Brazil. And you know the rest. He beats Brazil by stoppage. He was the better fighter than Brazil. But gamblers cashed on the over because the public views him like a Liston or a Foreman or a Tyson. And he's not a B or C. This is not the guy who is looking to find you. This is not the guy who once he gets you up against the ropes is going to try to empty the gun. Is going to say, okay, great. I'm getting out of here early. This isn't that guy. This is a cautious guy. He doesn't trust his skills. He's fighting a cruiserweight in Usyk, a cruiserweight at home. And he decides that he's going to turn this into a boxing contest. Folks, you got to be kidding. Isn't that the last thing you want to do against Alexander Usyk? Didn't Joshua watch the Derek Chisorek Usyk fight? Didn't he think to himself, hey, I hit hard. I'm an athlete. He is an athlete. But he doesn't use it. Well, you understand that this is a guy who has flashbacks, in my opinion. I'm just telling you what I think's going on. I'm speculating. He's having flashbacks in the middle of the Andy Ruiz fight. You notice there's no Joshua Ruiz 3. Have you noticed that? Joshua's out looking for guys to fight. He's one and one with Andy Ruiz. He's not fighting Andy again. Right? He has flashbacks to the middle of that Vladimir Klitschko fight. So after he throws some bombs and he has a completely disoriented Kubrat Pulev in front of him, and I believe round three, he lets Pulev back in the fight. Now, folks, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. That doesn't work in an era where you have a historical heavyweight in Tyson Fury, and you have a historical fighter in Olympic gold medal winner, unified cruiserweight champion, now heavyweight champion, still unbeaten, Alexander Usyk. So Joshua right here is vulnerable. He has a new trainer. Right? This is the guy who needs his corner. Right? This is not the guy. This isn't, you know, Bernard Hopkins or someone like that who, you know, knows the game he wants to employ. Right? Oscar De La Hoya. Changed trainers during his career. Had Freddie Roach. Had Floyd Mayweather Sr. Right? You know, the guy who you understand is really running his camp. This isn't that guy. He has to retool things. Let's face it. Even though he's had some spectacular early round knockouts, he's never going to be Sonny Liston. Right? A guy who's just, you know, hey, Floyd Patterson can't hang with me. Right? By the way, go back to those Liston-Patterson fights. The first one, Floyd decides to come at Sonny. Right. Sonny's not hunting him down. Floyd comes after him. Sonny was happy. It was Thanksgiving. Liston emptied the gun on him. Patterson did not survive the first round. You and I know that's not Anthony Joshua. If Joshua fights Fury, that's a mismatch. Fury's going to start moving. How many rounds is it going to take Anthony Joshua to figure out the movement, to get the confidence on the movement? Fury has reach. 
right? You're, you're not going to have an easy counterpunching opportunity like you did against Charles Martin. So we've gone through a PR exercise. That's what it is. Where Usyk, unfortunately, because of a Russian invasion of his country, is fighting in the Ukrainian army. Right? Boxing's a sport. It's not real life. There are some things that are more important. Right? Usyk also is the kind of guy who, in interviews, openly says that the highlight of his boxing career was winning his Olympic gold medal. And you're thinking to yourself, well, how's that remotely possible? Didn't this guy beat Maris Breedis? Didn't this guy, didn't this guy win the tournament win the Muhammad Ali trophy, unify the cruiserweight division. How's an amateur bout his biggest moment? It's because this guy isn't about all the legacy. He wants it. Don't get me wrong. It's important to him. But country comes first. Right? I would not be surprised if Usyk ends up fighting Tyson Fury, and if he beats Fury, I would not be surprised if he walks away from the sport. The guy has money in the bank. The guy has a Hall of Fame career. The guy has traveled. He beat Breedis in Breedis' backyard. He beat Tony Bellew in the UK, Bellew's backyard. This guy's been traveling around the world as many Ukrainian fighters have to, fighting opponents in their backyard. So, let's just put it this way. The contract that Anthony Joshua has might allow him to have an interim fight before fighting Usyk the second time. The names they were throwing around were interesting, but in my opinion, they weren't viable. Because the three guys they mentioned all would have a shot to beat Joshua. Especially now, with Joshua coming off a loss. Joshua with a new trainer. I want to encourage people to look at Joshua when he's looking at his corner. During the Andy Ruiz fight. Right, Look at him and ask yourself, wow, you know, is this the guy? who, when he gets hurt, is going to get off the canvas pissed. I'm not sure if he's that guy. So they talk about him fighting Luis Ortiz, southpaw, guy in his 40s. Folks, I'm just telling you, too dangerous. Let me put it differently. Luis Ortiz, of course, just stopped Charles Martin. He's in his 40s, and I'll agree, he falls apart. In the second half of fights, his stamina is not the best. Right? In my opinion, he's beating Deontay Wilder twice, and that's a younger Luis Ortiz. Then he gets caught in both fights. The second fight, you're wondering what he was thinking. Right? You know about Deontay Wilder's right hand. You were dropped by it multiple times the first time around. What are you doing in front of him? where he can throw that right hand on you. But Luis Ortiz is dangerous. He has more boxing skills than Anthony Joshua. He's more fluid. Right? The problem, too, is Ortiz, when I say more boxing skills, go back to the first round of the Usyk-Joshua fight. You're going to notice... Usyk's in there, you know, throwing feints and all this other stuff. That's what experienced boxers do. Joshua didn't know whether Usyk was coming or going. This is the lighter guy. It's not even Usyk's division. Right? Usyk's throwing feints and all this other stuff. They froze Joshua. You know who throws a lot of feints? Luis Ortiz. Right? Usyk, Southpaw, you can tell Joshua had a problem with the orientation. Right? Usyk is able to land too many 
left hands on Joshua. Right, the spacing through Joshua. Usyk, southpaw. Ortiz, southpaw. Let's talk about another guy. This guy has timing on his side. This guy has a certain level of fearlessness. Joe Joyce. They mentioned him as a guy to fight Joshua. Now understand, this is a huge fight. I personally believe both guys should be Olympic gold medal winners. Right? I thought Joe Joyce beat Tony Yoka in the championship fight in their Olympics. Now Joyce came in behind a jab against a better athlete. Now that's another fight you need to look at. Daniel Dubois, who lost to Joe Joyce, is about to fight Trevor Bryant for the WBA championship. If I'm Dubois, I pick up the phone and I call Iron Mike Tyson. Dubois has potential, but like Mike Tyson, he was there for the jab. He needs to talk to Tyson and figure out how to be sudden. Maybe another person to call is Sean Porter. Right, if you believe that non heavyweights can give heavyweights, big time advice. But understand, Joe Joyce came in with a jab. Now, Joyce cannot match Joshua in athleticism. Right, Joshua's faster. As I said, Joshua is the guy who looks like he's a great athlete, but he's not running that fast. Right? The question for me is whether Joshua can match Joe Joyce's mental drive. Because Joyce will come in and he will start throwing a jab on Anthony Joshua. Joyce hits hard. He's slower, but he compensates for it. I don't believe Joshua can fight Joyce right now. Understand, if Joshua loses for a third time, he falls out of the running, right? He is a cash cow in boxing, but now we're learning that the British people have figured out that Tyson Fury might be the best heavyweight of his generation, right? Things were cloudy before. We were arguing over whether it was Wilder or Joshua. You remember that? Now we're finding out that it was the guy who was suspended for part of that discussion. The other guy they were thinking about having Anthony Joshua in the ring with was Otto Wallen. Folks, that's a difficult fight. Wallen's an athlete. Wallen moves a lot better than Anthony Joshua. Let me point out that an argument can be made other than the John McDermott fight, the first one, that the closest Tyson Fury came to losing was against Otto Wallen, right? Quite frankly, when you look at the replay of that fight, the blood's gushing out of his eye. The referee should have stopped it. But just to understand, Wallen is a better athlete than Anthony Joshua. Let me change that. Maybe they're the same level of athlete. But Valen's actually willing to show it. He moves better than Anthony Joshua. Right? The question would be whether Joshua would be able to catch him. Understand, after the cut, Tyson Fury starts charging inside. Charging inside against Otto Valen. Would Anthony Joshua have that level of courage? Now, I believe all of this is going to solve itself. Right? You have a guy, Usyk, who just wants to be undisputed at heavyweight. He wants to fight the best. He's already beaten Joshua. He understands the last piece is Tyson Fury. He's openly said, hey, I'd love to fight Fury next. You have Fury who doesn't really want to fight him, right? Fury has hinted at retirement and stuff like that. Now, you and I know at this level of the game, especially in the heavyweight division, 
Guys can talk about retirement. What they really want to do is pick their opponents. Right? A fighter like Tyson Fury, who already has the belt, who's already beaten Deontay Wilder, if he beats Anthony Joshua, he can ride off into the sunset and say, hey, look, I have beaten the guys you thought were the top. Then if he hears Usyk's retired, he can come back and say, hey, okay, well, you know, let me fight Joshua again. Or let me fight whoever becomes the next heavyweight champion. Maybe that's Ergovic. Right? So, now there's talk that Joshua is going to use his interim fight to fight Tyson Fury. Folks, that move makes sense to me. Understand, Ortiz, Joyce, Otto Wallen, too dangerous. I'd love to see him fight Deontay Wilder, but Deontay Wilder's taking some time off. And who can blame him? Right, let's remember his last fight. It had to be heart-wrenching. Knocked down multiple times by Tyson Fury. Right, drops Fury. Fury gets off the canvas, is able to finish him. Right, he's methodically outboxed the last three rounds of that fight. He's made a lot of money. He's in his 30s. Right, he, you know, boxers have lives. He's decided he's going to take some time off. Okay, fair enough. So I believe Joshua's best move, the one that could give him redemption, especially since Fury sold out Wembley Stadium quickly for his fight against Dylan White, is to fight Tyson Fury if he beats Dylan White. Understand that fight would be a financial blockbuster in the United Kingdom, right? The people love Anthony Joshua. This is that guy who, even when he loses, I remember Ray Leonard losing to Roberto Duran the first time. People make excuses for him. Not every fighter is loved. The contrast is a bit shocking. Because across the ring, you have Tyson Fury who can't get a break. It's so bad, Tyson Fury has been fighting outside of the United Kingdom. Did any of his fights against Deontay Wilder take place on British soil? Folks, it's a blockbuster. This is prize fighting. I believe the biggest prize Anthony Joshua can get the most prestige would be against Tyson Fury. I believe that fight's going to happen because I believe if Usyk is offered step aside money, I know this sounds ridiculous, right? Uh, they were trying to pay Joshua step aside money at one point. If Usyk's offered step aside money, and keep in mind, we're talking about real life here. Right? Usyk's country has been destroyed. However, that war ends. Right? Usyk has a family. Usyk has kids. You can tell Usyk is a family man, right? I believe he has some of the kids tattooed on him or something like that. And so if you're going to say to Usyk, hey, you know what? Player, you don't even have to fight Joshua again unless he beats Tyson Fury. If he doesn't, then you get the winner of Fury Joshua. Not that Fury is going to go through with that match. If I'm Usyk, I might take that deal. So let me just say, the problem Joshua has, apart from the fact that Ortiz, Joyce, 
Otto Wallen, Deontay Wilder would all be very competitive matches. In other words, he might not even make it back to Usyk. The big problem Joshua has is if Tyson Fury shows up in shape, I don't believe Joshua can beat him. I believe this is a destruction where you have a guy who can throw punches backing up. You have a guy with better defense than Joshua has on his best day. You have a guy who's going to keep Joshua busy and keep Joshua outside. Right? I think Fury wins that fight, and I think it's the kind of nationalistic, emotional fight where Fury would want to do so by exclamation. Right? If you're Anthony Joshua, you're thinking to yourself, okay, look. I only have to be right once. I've seen this man down in multiple fights, not just the Wilder fights. Right? Steve Cunningham had him on the floor. If I'm Joshua, I come in and I think, you know, one way I can convince this boxing crowd that has been so good to me that I'm a box office cow on a level that might even exceed Canelo is by landing one lucky punch and becoming the first man to officially beat Tyson Fury. Right, so to me, if I'm Anthony Joshua, this is the fight I take. Enter the building on the top floor. Right, Luis Ortiz, too dangerous. You fight one of these guys, and you lose. Oh, my goodness. You're almost out of the top ten. Right? Don't do it. If the Tyson Fury people understand that Tyson, who's making a mint on the white fight, would make a mint fighting you, and that this would be part of a great financial run for Tyson Fury. If they approach you and say, hey, you got an interim, I'll be your Huckleberry, fight me next. Isn't the whole point here to fight the champ? Right, don't fight Usyk, he's already beaten you. Do we know whether I can beat you? If I'm Anthony Joshua, I take that fight. I signed that bottom line immediately. Understand what's been happening in the UK. Right? The Cal Brook Amir Khan fight sold out in minutes. The Tyson Fury Dillian White fight sold out in minutes. You would have a sellout in minutes. This would be like unbeaten Ali against unbeaten. Fraser, right? Don't get me wrong. I know Joshua has losses, but there is no group I encounter online as committed to their boxer as the Anthony Joshua crowd, right? This is two different parts of the UK, two different worlds. If you're a Tyson Fury guy, it's obvious who the best heavyweight is. You look at the size, you see him on his toes, you see the ambidexterity, you see the jab, you see the movement, right? The only mystery is how the judges could have scored the first Wilder fight a draw. You know, the guy deserves to be unbeaten. But if you're a Joshua fan, you firmly believe, firmly believe that this guy had two off nights. You believe against Andy Ruiz, he drops Ruiz. Ruiz is down. Then he gets reckless when Ruiz gets off the canvas, finds himself down the same round. You believe he was reckless. 
You look at the Usyk fight and the argument is, hey man, he fought Usyk's fight. Isn't this what we said about Ray Leonard when he lost to Roberto Duran the first time? Right? They said, hey, Ray fought his fight. Right? My mother was saying, Ray fought his fight. Right? That's when you know the public's having a love affair with the guy. The idea is that if Joshua just comes in and does the math and realizes this guy has fought two fights at heavyweight, I've been a heavyweight my whole life. Let me show him my heavyweight power. Right? Actually, let me let me back up. I believe Usyk's fought three fights now at heavyweight, right? Right? The the idea is that Joshua almost outboxes Usyk. If you believe this crowd. So, from this deranged seat, I'm expecting to hear that Tyson Fury and Joshua have agreed to meet. in Joshua's interim fight before he fights Usyk, right? Understand what this could lead to. If Joshua shocks the world and beats Tyson Fury, that Usyk rematch would be for several titles, wouldn't it? Even yahoos like me who believe Tyson Fury is the best in the division would have to give Joshua his props. That's how I see it. Let me just close by saying again, I feel Tyson Fury beats Anthony Joshua. But let me hear from you. If you have different ideas about anything I've said in this video, American football, Ergovic against Zhang. By the way, I like Ergovic in that fight, but it's dangerous, right? Um, Fury against White. What Anthony Joshua should do next? Tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Right? My YouTube channel is Dwyer, D W Y E R, 70905. Thanks for stopping by.